We wanted space. Both of us grew up on five acres. And since we had a one-year-old, we wanted to have, instead of living on this tiny piece in Seattle, we wanted to have some space for him to explore. And we loved the mountains, so um, North Bend was perfect. I met Tim up at Tiger Mountain, and I called my mom that night and said, Mom, I just met the guy I'm going to marry. I yeah. was hiking up, and she was hiking down yeah. with yeah. another guy. With an <laughs> and she said, this is my friend, Gary. <laughs> The outdoors passion started in my um, 20s, hasn't stopped. I had about 10 years worth of really bizarre, totally unrelated things that happened to me. Um, I had a uh, like complete loss of my, of my legs. Later on, I lost complete vision. So I had these really significant attacks, but they were all unrelated, so I kept going to different doctors. And when all that was said and done and they did an MRI, that was in 1996. And then he said, you know, you have MS. I read that term. It was pretty scary, but you know, getting the verdict was it's pretty devastating. I was really determined to not let it stop me. I remember my goal was to just keep being able to run up to the top of our road. And then it was just walking, and then walking with poles. And But you know, I remember when I had to give up skiing. I'm gonna keep skiing. But you know, I got off the lift, and so of course I crossed my skis and just about picked off this little kid that was skiing, scared the heck out of him and his parents. Took the skis off and said, well, that's, that's it. And, um, you know, then you just kind of slowly, then it, then it was just more of a slow progression. But all the while we're trying to find places that she could be successful at. Oh yeah, you know, like Tim, Tim never gave up. My goal was always to, you know, include Lucinda to the extent possible. When we did uh, adaptive biking, and we tried the all electric. And it was like, okay, that's something we want to get. And then we discovered Outrider USA. And it was like, wow. I needed something that would go off-road, be stable. I mean, we live on this beautiful acreage. The, when we did get the coyote initially, we got out to some places that Lucinda hadn't visited for well, well over oh. 20 years, you yeah. know? And so it was just awesome to get her back. So I'd forgotten just how beautiful a place we live in. I mean, this whole valley is just stunning. We moved here for a reason. It was, it was the best week that I had had. Uh, it's, it's absolutely been life-changing to be able to, to get out. And, and I feel I've, I have a sense of freedom. I went down and visited friends, you know, that lived down the road and it's just, it's wonderful. For me, I'm excited about exploring. I mean, yeah. getting out and bringing Lucinda around to, to see uh, places that are familiar, but also new places for us. Yeah, I mean, the joy, you know, that you get from being on it. I kind of call it like a super mini ATV, customized for people with disabilities. It's absolutely life-changing. Holy I moved to British Columbia in 1972 from Ontario. 
I've been here ever since. I, I built a little driftwood uh, hut, and oh yeah, it was, it was needed. Uh, um, and in those days, uh, there was hardly anybody around. Uh, yeah, uh, I liked to go camping, and it was good to take the kids camping. Good memories, but just memories. Everything becomes different after you've had a stroke. I was in Shanghai and I had spent 10 days in Shanghai. When we came home, I started to feel real yucky on the airplane. So when I got to Vancouver, I just stayed in my apartment. Nothing was making any sense. So she had me taken to the hospital and they put me in one of those scanner things. And I, had, I was on the gurney thing and they were just going through the front door and that's when I had the big stroke. And my life had totally changed. I try not to focus on my disabilities and try to just live a normal life. From the Cadillac at 560 horsepower to a scooter at five miles an hour. <laughs> it took some adjusting. And I see all kinds of silly things with little tires or three tires and just nothing, nothing. I really look forward to the Coyote to give me that opportunity to go out and enjoy life a little bit. This is the, the uh, most dramatic thing since I had my stroke. This is the answer. The coyote's the answer. It really is. I've lived here for over 12 years and I've never had the opportunity to get out and see it as well as I did today. I haven't been able to use my own power and really get out of the condo, but have some fun doing it. And people look at you when you're on my little scooter and they, they're they not very nice. So when they see me on this, they go, ooh, what's that? It's changing my life. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And that's going to start a conversation. And I thrive in that kind of environment. It, it, it's going to make a big difference to my whole life. That, my heart, I'm going to know. Um, uh, this is the most exciting thing that's happened to me in over a decade. I mean, <laughs> and my little scooter at five miles an hour, mm, this is way, way better. <laughs> yeah, way, way better. I was 22 there with my friend and someone plowed into me from behind. I turned around and it was him. Like, what are you doing? And Craig told me he was 27. I, I thought 29 sounded too old. It would have been. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 35 years in a chair and like, you know, I've gone hunting and canoeing and water skiing and snow skiing and jet skiing and boating and life's still there. You know, you're gonna meet a wonderful person that's gonna be like, yeah, I'm game. You know, it's gonna be different and you're gonna have to use your brain to figure it out, but you can. Everybody's got a story, life's hard. You know, laugh at it and get into it. I was 18 years old, just out of high school, and just at uh, 
I started at the University of Kansas, was there for like three weeks. So just completely perfect, went to classes that day, was headed back to the dorms and uh, pain kind of erupted. And I had a uh, stroke of the spinal cord, cause unknown. A guy saw me and gave me a ride to the hospital and, and I was spitting up blood and life flighted and never found a reason and never walked again. Luckily I had some great, great friends and you know, I didn't know I didn't know how to do like what the stuff that you just normally know how to do. Even before he was in a wheelchair and had the accident was ready to tackle life. And his friends were the same, right there ready with him. So after he got in the chair, none of that really changed. So it was 87 when I had my stroke. And then a couple years after that, I got into wheelchair racing and with this club, Kansas City Wheelchair Road and Track. Like Regina was saying that she runs up in the woods behind our house here. And it's miles of national forest right there and I've been looking at it for five years and not able to access it. I was complaining and Regina was like, what do you need, what would do it? And I was like, I think I need a machine that'll do it. And the reason I picked the Coyote was I think it's gonna be the easiest to use on a daily basis, easiest to transport, easiest to take with me. I see myself jumping in it daily, really. The riding experience for me was really comfortable and in control. Going through things that wouldn't have thought of doing, but it was like, this thing's gonna go there. I wish something like this would have been around for the last 30 years. So many things that I've been across in 30 years have been like, well, you know, that's just not possible. Uh, this is gonna make a lot more things possible.